What's up, everybody? Welcome to the recap show of this week's NFL. Just about halfway through the season. We are. We are about halfway through the season. Uh, kind of crazy season. We've seen more injuries than ever before, it feels like. I mean, I know football is always susceptible to injuries, but this year is... Injuries. Yeah, particularly uh, bad because a lot of these teams haven't got the preseason, you know, the preseason training, COVID. Uh, so it's, it's unfortunate, but we're going to start off by talking some of the hot topics that are going on in sports right now, uh, in NFL right now, sorry. Um, starting with, you know, kind of last night's game, there was a little bit of an issue uh, with someone's wife, Golden Tate's wife, has – uh, spoken about his lack of touches. So he is now, you know, his wife is getting involved talking about lack of touches. Not the only person who's been complaining about lack of touches. We also have from Baltimore, Marquise Brown. Mm-hmm. So what are your thoughts on guys going out, families going out of guys, uh, talking about their lack of targets? I don't like it. Um, uh, respect your team, respect your quarterback, respect your system. And I especially don't like family members coming out. Yeah. Giselle was really known about for the situation. that. Giselle would do that all the time in uh, – Big time. But um, – Absolutely ridiculous. I don't like any of it. <clears throat> it, it creates a bad, uh, bad situation for this. It is a bad look. Uh, Marquise Brown is a, going in his sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Uh, in his sophomore year right now and uh, you know I think that it's tough that they're having a little bit of trouble throwing the ball mm-hmm. Baltimore which I guess is tough on a guy who had a great rookie season great rookie season oh, yeah. and I think he's seeing those some of these second year players AJ Brown with Titans DK Metcalf with mm-hmm. Seattle um, Terry McLaughlin with uh with Washington really make kind of these breakout years. And uh, unfortunately, he's having the opposite effect. Yeah. I guess that's tough, but he deleted the tweet. Still not, you know, good for a team that's, you know, definitely a playoff team. And then right. when it comes to Golden Tate, uh, it's tough because this would have been fine if he was traded today. But mm-hmm. he was not traded today, which brings us to the trade deadline. Uh, which was boring at best. <laughs> yes, very dry, very dry day. I, I don't know what I, – there's so many players that I'm looking at and I'm like, how are they still on this team? <laughs> or teams that I'm looking at that I'm like, how did they not make the move? I mean, I think the most disappointing team, and especially after having such a weak draft, mm-hmm. is the Green Bay Packers because they got uh, – one hundred percent. They did not help out that. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers at all. Okay. Or the the defense. Uh, you know that they're getting crushed by the run game. Crushed. And yeah. listen, Dalvin Cook is a good running back. There's no mm-hmm. doubt about it. But last year you got beat by Mostert, who, by the way, solid running back. Mm-hmm. Solid running back. But there's no way that they should be going for all those yards on you. The Packers turn good running backs into great running backs. And exactly. That's, and, that's, and you got to make these moves because they're right on the cusp of what could be. You know, the NFC is wide open. I don't find the AFC as wide open as the NFC, and I know me and you disagree on that. Um, but the NFC is very wide open to me. And they could mm-hmm. be – they're just like two players away from making that big step where they can compete with Seattle, where they can compete with the Bucks, who, by the way, didn't look great yesterday. We'll talk about that more on our recap. The Giants' defense is looking better and better each week. They, they are. They are. Uh, but, yeah, no, for sure, some really disappointing. Um, <laughs> disappointing. I think I'm most disappointed in the past. Oh, for sure. And you know what? Uh, Packers. For me, the Texans as well, because they don't have a first-round draft pick. Uh, I'm apparently mm-hmm. they were all they were working on the deal with Will Fuller, which is also such a bad thing. And I know that the Mets in the MLB dealt with this four or five years ago with Wilson Ramos. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Ramos. No, is am I right? Wilson Ramos? Is that the guy who they traded? And then it, it got called back when they traded for – I forgot who they traded for. But it, call, it got called back, and he had to come back on the team that traded him. I forgot. It was like 2016. Uh, I'm not. It was, I don't think it was – his name was Wilson. I just don't remember his last name. But that's essentially what's going on kind of like – uh, Will Fuller did post a tweet with a gif of mm-hmm. just a guy like this. Oh, you're thinking of Wilmer Flores. Wilmer Flores, that's who I'm thinking. I'm not thinking. <laughs> I, was like, I know Wilson. it was a Will. I know it was a Will. I just didn't. I, I got my players confused. But yeah, uh, you know, I think it's something like that. And I think the mm-hmm. Texans wide receiver, it's just. Yeah. They don't have a first round draft pick. They really don't have that many draft picks. They need to build. You know, it's. Yeah. Uh, I think it was imperative for them. And then, you know, Green Bay shit the bed in, excuse my language, but shit the bed in yeah, in the draft. And then now, right if you shit the bed in the draft, you can't shit the bed free agent-wise. Mm-hmm. You, you can only do one. Because I'll give you this, like you said, you know, in order to compete with Seattle, they had to get better offensively and most certainly defensively. Oh, yeah. Because think- Seattle's offense is, boy, is better, <laughs> and Seattle's defense is starting to clip. Right, like a and, little bit to where that that type of game can swing and, Seattle. Forward. And Seattle made the moves uh, to do that with with you know yeah. Don Lepp. And it, the you know at this point, Green Bay is not a let's re in a rebuild stage. They're just not. They're not bad enough yeah. to be in a rebuild stage that you can have these you know free agencies where you're just do. Um, but yeah, no, uh, very very poor by. Green Bay, and it just kind of feels like they're trying to squeeze Aaron Rodgers out at this point. I like, agree. And, and it's like, I know you don't like him, but to say that, like, he's not, you know, he can't be a, a, a playoff winning quarterback if you surround him with the right people, you know, their offense, oh, without a doubt. their offense was not, to me, the problem, though I do need think he needed more targets. Mm-hmm. Um, but to not improve that defense is – wild to me um there's a couple of other teams like that I mean I felt the same way about the Patriots not you know unloading maybe Joe uh Joe Thune um you know Stefan Gilmore for sure uh, I didn't get that I thought Arizona could have used to make a couple big big moves um because I think they're also at that point where they can as we saw they can compete with Seattle they can compete with the best of them um so I think that that's something there's some very disappointing in a lot of teams. Uh, a team that I'm not disappointed in is Baltimore, who made that move for, you know, in Gakwe. Um, and, you know, that's something that, you know, they, they've been making moves. It's just that something's off with, with the Ravens, and I think it has to do with people learning how to guard Lamar Jackson. Um, but, yeah, no, I definitely agree. – Definitely, for sure, that uh, there was a disappointing trade deadline. I wonder if it falling on election day had to do with it. I don't know. I doubt uh, it. I get, it you know. Um, in other news, the Buccaneers uh, wide receiver Antonio Brown is officially activated, and he is ready to go on Sunday. That's, yes. a, sc- that's a scary wide receiving core. Uh, that's scary. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a scary. It's getting they're getting scarier. Okay. Um, don't we're gonna talk about them in the recap. Obviously, they, you know, kind of didn't impress me yesterday. But we'll talk about that in the uh, recap show. I was but impressed yeah, by one team in that game. I was as well. I was as well. Um, the COVID night. By the way, that they didn't move Evan Ingram. I thought last night they they targeted him more to. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that too. Weird, just Nothing. very strange, very strange uh, draft. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. free yeah. agent, free agent. Uh, that's not free agent. God, trade deadline, crazy trade deadline. Um, it's 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 nutty. It's nutty. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely. One team did impress last night, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the COVID-19 list has gone drastically up in these past couple of days. Uh, yeah. Yes, it has. 
Andy Dalton is officially on the COVID-19 list. Uh, John Elway, COVID-19. <laughs> Marlon, Marlon Humphreys, uh, COVID-19, which means a lot of the defense is going to have to take, you know, test. Joe Ellis, the uh, of the Broncos uh, office, has been tested positive for COVID-19. A.J. Dillon has tested co- positive for COVID-19. Bears offensive tackle Jason Spriggs has tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, very large list of COVID-19. What did you say? Sorry. You said don't fill out your Super Bowl boxes just yet, kid. Exactly, exactly. A <laughs> lot, of, lot of COVID-19. Uh, it's starting to spread. More teams are being affected little by little. Yep. Um, not looking too good. Let's hope we can get this thing under under containment and finish out this football season. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. NFL is doing all they can right now. Um, you know, but it mm. it it is what it is. Unfortunately, this is what the, our new the new normal, which stinks, but that's what it is. Um, and let's just hope that these players get better and are are able to go back, uh, similar to how. A uh, our guy Cam Newton came back, not but maybe a little bit better than him. All right, so moving into our next part of the show where we recap all the games that happened, I'll uh start with the Thursday night game the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. Uh, James, what'd you think of that game? Who impressed you? Who didn't impress you? Uh, well, give me, give me oh. your thoughts. Well, I can say this. The Falcons did not impress me, but the Panthers certainly did not impress me. Yeah. Um, but what I will tell you is I am – we spoke about it last night on the show. The Panthers are not – the lack of running the ball against that Falcons defense was atrocious. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't help Teddy Bridgewater whatsoever. Teddy Bridgewater needs a run game to support yeah. his play style. Um, so when McCaffrey does come back, I think the Panthers will figure out their way. I don't think it's uh, panic time. No, yeah. no, and, and and let's remember the Panthers are building up a, a very young, good team. Uh, mm-hmm. Matt Rule is doing the best he can. I mean, it takes you know it takes a little bit to to grow that team. This Absolutely. is not. I mean, to me, it's almost better than kind of losing more games to get a better draft pick to continue yeah. to uh, improve, especially that young defense. Um, but let me tell you, some some of those uh, wide receivers look. Curtis Samuel's looked really good with his run. Um, you know, and also their backup quarterback, who was in for a little bit, who I've gotten to watch in the XFL with PJ Walker. Dude mm-hmm. had he had no fear. He was just going for it. Like, yeah, he yeah, he was on him. He and was... I like and I like that. That's a great backup to have, especially with a guy like Teddy Bridgewater, who's a little bit little bit injury prone, as we've seen in his career. Um, Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, hold on. Teddy Bridgewater injury prone, or is Teddy Bridgewater susceptible susceptible to the dirty hit? That was a dirty hit on him. You're right. You're right. Um, Multiple times now. I I Teddy agree with you. You're right. A likable guy. Like, <laughs> no, he is very likable. He's not. A, he's to me him and Tannehill are the perfect examples of you don't need a star quarterback. Mm-hmm. For me, and and me and you feel the same way about this. We don't feel the same way about a lot of things, mm-hmm. but yeah, I wasn't impressed by Atlanta. I think Atlanta needs to blow it up. They're another team that disappointed me. Yeah, this trade deadline, I don't understand why you wouldn't try to get a first round pick for Julio Jones. You could get a first round pick for him. I think you could. Mm-hmm. I agree. I yeah, I think the Falcons totally missed the ball on this deadline. Oh yeah, they didn't move anybody. No, 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 no. They could have moved tons of more people. Uh, they didn't move anybody. It was disappointing. Um, they impressed me a little bit. I mean, you know, Matt Ryan is all, always impresses me a little bit. He is okay. a, I see he's a stud who just, you know, he he just hits the wrong button. I guess you could say. Uh, I agree. Just, but he he's a stud. I mean, you know, I think. If they ran the ball in the Super Bowl, this Atlanta Falcons team would still be winning. And I, and I know that that's, you know, people think that's crazy. But I think to say if they, if they won that Super Bowl, they would be the NFC team 
you know what I mean? That that would be them. Um, yeah. But they didn't, and, 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 and now they have this, you know, just stigma, and it's unfortunate. But Matt Ryan is is a good player. Uh, I'm glad that they won because mm-hmm. I think they're a way better team than a one win team. They just can't put it together, and that's that's the sad part. Yeah, exactly. It was a it was a fun it was a decent game to watch. Um, it wasn't bad. No, it I wasn't. I didn't get bored. No, same, same. I did not get bored. Like some other certain games. games. Yeah, but um, I didn't get bored. Um, that AFC South is fun to watch. Carolina Panthers are fun to watch. I think they're going to continue to get better. Um, and uh, not to worry, Panther fans. You got a great coach and uh, a great young quarterback and some great pieces that for the long run are going to be uh, really keep saying great, but really good. And once you get that, you know, not only Christian McCaffrey on the run game, but also in the passing game too, he, he provides a whole different outlet yeah, for you. Absolutely. And it's important to have a, a good running back uh, that you can pass to be, especially when you're, you don't have the best tight end. So mm-hmm. I think that that's, you know, just, they're going to continue to grow. Christian McCaffrey is only 24. So you know, yeah. Yeah. you got you got a nice a nice team around you. All right, let's move on to the. Yeah, definitely not time to panic. Oh, oh, keep lagging. Sorry, it's not time to panic. You you are right though. He, fr- he froze for a little bit. I think we're we're back. Did I? Yeah, just for a little bit. It's, it's you know okay. it's, it's Zoom. We we have you know we're not per, we're not a perfect operation quite yet. We're working soon. soon. <laughs> um, next up we got the New England Patriots and the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo might be the worst six and two team I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, I mean, listen, giving up twenty one points to the Pats is. Unacceptable at this point. Unacceptable, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, they have no offense. Mm-hmm. They, you know, it's, their defense isn't what it used to be. No. Josh Allen, I was willing, I was like ready in the beginning of the season, and I, I think you agree with me a little bit on this. Give it, I was like, give him the MVP. What an improvement! Wow. This guy's really making it like versus those Rams and the Jets game and all that stuff. I'm like, wow, this guy's a stud. He's going to yeah. continue to grow, and he's going to be better than Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. That's what I said in my head. Yeah. And then he played the Titans. And ever since that, it's been a steady decrease every time. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. I don't know what it is. 154 yards passing. For someone with that cannon of an arm, is not does not impress yeah. me one bit. I agree. With, they got Stefan, and again, I was about to in the beginning of the season say, "Wow, Stefan," and still now, I'm like, "Wow, Stefan Diggs wasn't the problem here with the Vikings. He wasn't, right. and, and mm-hmm. I had thought he was, and I was like, the Vikings are going to be fine without him. As we see, the Vikings are not fine no. without him, <laughs> and." I would hate to see what the Bills would be without him because he's really becoming quite a stud. Um, yes. Josh Allen, I don't think – I'm not going to say that he's in the hot seat because they are winning. Mm-hmm. Um, but you got to think to yourself – You can't ignore the record. You can't ignore – yeah, it's 6-2. and two. Mm-hmm. He, he, But 154 yards of someone with that big of an arm, and he has targets. John Brown, um, yeah. he, Cole Beasley. Devin mm-hmm. Singletary is a great uh, receiving running back. Stephon mm-hmm. Diggs, I mean, you know, yeah. at what point are you going to be like, maybe this guy isn't who we think he is and we need yeah. to move on? I don't think uh, – obviously not right now, but yeah. he's, he went from impressing me so much to just yeah. blown. I mean, you can't score a touchdown against the Jets. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Yeah. And he didn't score a passing touchdown against the the beaten up Patriots, who have gotten other than the Forty ers have been hit with the injury bug hard. Oh yeah, but uh, oh. you know they're gonna have a really tough time. The Bills. I mean, they're. Mm-hmm. I think they're gonna win the division. 
but I think they're going to have a really tough time Mm -hmm. in the playoffs getting anywhere. Yeah. Unless they improve. They need to improve their running defense, obviously. We've Mm -hmm. spoken about and Josh Allen needs to, to improve it and make the leap that he was showing at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Yeah, they – the Bills – I'm not 100% concerned with them offensively. I do have some concerns there. Defensively right. is more my concern. Right. That giving up 21 pe- points to the Patriots is unacceptable. Uh, giving up any points to the Jets is unacceptable. Yeah. And that Bills defense was studs. Studs, mm-hmm. studs. I agree. Carlos I agree. Hyde. Uh, you know they then they pick up Josh Norman. Uh, Edmonds is a good player. I think that you know there's something missing. I was ready. Sean McDermott, coach of the year. I thought he was going to be, and obviously I don't think that right now. I think that they have a lot to work on. Mm-hmm. And again, another team that didn't make any moves with the trade deadline. So just you know. Something something to think about. Uh, and we're going to move on to another team in the AFC East with Miami Dolphins, to me, shocking the Rams. I didn't think that they had a chance versus the Rams, but their defense, Brian Flores, dude. Got he's, him playing again. He's a, oh, he's a coach. He's, he's a coach. A, he's a great coach. It's funny because, like, uh, whenever the Giants were playing the Cowboys, I was out to, to eat um, for, mm-hmm. for a friend's birthday. And I saw – I was talking to the bartender who was a uh, Jets fan. Like, I, we were outside, you know, doing – but he – you know, whatever. Following protocol. Don't want to get in trouble. We were following protocol. <laughs> and, um, and he was – you know, I like your mask because I had a Jets mask. And he then well, – I was talking to his friend who's a Miami Dolphins fan. And uh, the guy was like, they've made all the worst moves. And I was like, are you crazy? I'm like, he's like, I wish we kept Gase. And I thought this guy was insane. And I still think he's insane. We should have kept Tannehill. We should have done this. I'm like, dude, Brian Flores is an amazing coach. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, look at the special teams and the, the, the defense, what they've done. Uh, the Rams are in trouble. Um, another team that's good. But mm. yeah, Rams are in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Not a lot of cap space. Nope. Their defense obviously didn't play bad. You yeah. know, it's their it was their offense that killed you. Mm-hmm. Um, Jared Goff should not be throwing sixty one times. He just shouldn't. <laughs> He's not that good. Um, you need a better running back. Cam Akers, mm-hmm. I don't think is your answer. I like Daryl yeah. Henderson, but he should not be your first option. Um, no. You've got a very good receiving core. I like Woods. I like Coop. Um, I think they are also in, and I know that they've paid Goff an insane amount of money, but I think that they need to be in the, the, the uh, in this quarterback market right now. It's hard to be when you are tied up in that contract. Exactly. And you didn't really want that contract is the other problem. Yeah, so yeah. It, but, it's a situation. It's kind of like they are so deep in. Right, that, that they kind of they're stuck in that in that world now. So, uh, yeah, but uh, Miami's deep. I, def- I don't. I don't trust in Jerry Goff. No, 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 for sure. And again, similar to the Matt Ryan, except I don't think you could put Matt Ryan and and Jared Goff on the same level at all. But similar that hangover that we were right there and we could have won. Hangover has hit them and it's hit them hard. Um, with Goff. Jared Goff has killed me because I've been in and out on Jared Goff his Same. whole career. It's like one year I'm in, one year I'm out. It's it's just the way he plays and that doesn't, you know, the way he does play with that in and out style is not worthy of the contract he has and it's going to be no. down for Rams for a long time to come. I, I agree with you on that. Um, but yeah, Miami's defense looked impressive and that's exactly what your defense needs to do when you have a starting Injury prone, and, and, and you can say that Tua is injury prone. He's had a couple of injuries in his okay. career. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you need is to keep him off the field. All right, we got this nice young defense. Our coach is an amazing defensive coach. Let's, uh, let's keep mm-hmm. them. Let's, and that's exactly what they did for his first game. I think that was perfect. Obviously, Tua's got to improve a little bit. He's, mm-hmm. you know, 12 and 22, 93 yards. Not going to cut it. 
Um, yep. When you're playing a team like Kansas City, your defense is not going to be able to um, prevent that. Uh, when you're playing a team like, you know, we got the NFC West this time, playing a team like uh, Seattle, Arizona, whose offense is incredible and mm-hmm. are really playing well, you're not going to have that option to, uh, to, to rely on your defense as heavily. So he's got Absolutely. this move, but this is the perfect game to bring him on as. I did not think that they should have brought him on. I thought mm-hmm. stick with Ryan Fitzpatrick for now, let Tua learn, but a perfect game for him to come back. Absolutely. All right, and moving on to our next game, division rivalry, and I've been riding this Pittsburgh ri- uh, wave since the beginning. I've bet on them every time, and they were the underdogs in this game uh, against the Ravens. They win. Uh, Defense plays well, two interceptions on Baltimore. Um, but, you know, Big Ben doesn't have to do much right now. That's exciting. Yep. Thank you. Um, the, the Steelers are the best team in the NFL right now, in, in my opinion. I Not just, just from record. I think they're the hardest team to beat right now. When we get to our power rankings, I will talk to you and why I disagree with that. But the Steelers are playing out of their minds right now, and they're playing great. Mike Tomlin's an amazing coach. He kept that team in there last year, too. Don't forget, he kept them in contention with mm-hmm. Buck Hodges and Mason Rudolph as the quarterback. Now you got Ben, yeah. and Ben is not, you know, it's not, you know, uh, Pro Bowl, uh, Super Bowl, Ben Roethlisberger from five, ten need- years ago, but you don't need him to be. That's my point. You just need reliable, and he is reliable right now. Big Ben, he's looking good. They did great in the draft, you know, not having a first-round draft pick, but they got ended up getting a first-round draft pick with having Chase Claypool there. Minka Fitzpatrick's incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two of the best trades of last season. TJ Watt, Count Hayward. Uh, you know, I love Pouncey, who's still with them, who's just yeah. an absolute stud. And if I was picking a street, like a fighting game, like fighting – I would pick him. He's a great player. They're great players. Juju Smith-Schuster is not letting the touches get to him too much. He's, you know, just having a good time. Uh, Eric Ebron's having a decent year for them. I love James Conner. A lot of people think that he's not the running back of the future. Dude, he's, he's so tough. He fought cancer. You think that, you think that he's scared of, of linebackers? You think that he is? Because he's not. Yeah, exactly. A Pittsburgh boy, I love – James Conner. I love what he's done with the team. You don't need a, a stud all the time. They, they got the perfect – that team is perfectly constructed. Uh, yeah. Tomlin's amazing. Tomlin, if they continue on this, Tomlin deserves coach of the year. Yeah, and that's – this is all these reasons of the reason why the Steelers are the best team, in I my, think they're in my very opinion. Good. I think they're very good. I think they're very good. Um, I could see – a parade marching down Steel City this week, this year. I I hope so. I I real like I said. I how sick would it be for James Conner, Pittsburgh K? I, I, and I'm putting like not Ben, not Ben, not Juju, not even Chase Claypool for mm-hmm. James Conner to go down and Pittsburgh kid fought cancer, mm-hmm. does all the right things, you know. Wasn't supposed to play. Le'Veon Bell sat out. He's got to be thanking his lucky stars for Le'Veon Bell right now. And uh, yeah. that would be sick for them. I hope they win. Uh, but Baltimore is looking a little rusty. They have yeah. a great coach as well. Um, mm-hmm. A little bit of a tough schedule, you know, uh, playing Kansas City, uh, playing yeah. Pittsburgh twice a year is tough. Cleveland isn't a joke this year. You can never count out Cincinnati. Um, I yeah. can't now. <laughs> I think that they will continue to get better. Uh, they will continue to get better. They got – they didn't make any moves for a wide receiver, which they really could have. They really needed to, having a good target. Um, but let's not forget they have Mark Andrews. I don't think it's time to panic. They're still 5-2. and two, um, You know, and let's be real. The Ravens are a team, same with the Steelers, that enjoy a nice home field advantage. They have great fans. And they're 2-2 two and two at home right now. Their two losses have come at home. I think that makes a big difference. Um, but I, I, the Ravens will get better, and the Steelers will mm-hmm. 
come down a little bit from where they are right now because I, I don't think they're going to stay undefeated this whole year, nor do you want to be undefeated. You know no, what I mean? Gonna... So they're going to obviously come down a little bit. Um, it'll be interesting to see what game they come down at, but yeah. they will come down. Absolutely. They do play the Ravens on Thanksgiving, which I think could go the Ravens' favor this time if they get themselves together. <laughs> What'd you say? That's a great Thanksgiving game. <laughs> it is, it is, because there's a couple crappy ones this year. Yeah, a couple the, really bad ones. The Lions are playing on Thanksgiving. The Lions, and it's Cowboys Redskins, which is Ooh, I don't yeah. know, Cowboys football team. Sorry, Washington football team. Cowboys football team. Cowboys Redskins would remind us all too well of the actual Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, <laughs> no, that's Pilgrims, bud. Not not Cowboys. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, good point. John Wayne. <laughs> good. Um, point. But yes. I'm gonna learn uh, my. There some bad, some bad games. That's going to be a great game, though. All right, next, moving on to uh, potentially upset of the week: Bengals beating the Titans. Joey Burrows, baby. Um, I, I like Joey. I like Joey. What's that? Uh, I'll tell you this. Sometimes you go into a game and you underplay it. Mm-hmm. You underplay your opponent and you get smacked in the mouth. There's a great quote from the legendary Mike Tyson. Okay. You He's, have a plan until I smack you in the mouth. Everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Mouth, exactly. And the Titans had a plan until Joey B came out and punched him right in the mouth. He did. He did. And the Bengals, um, and I, there's another team that re- gives me a little bit of reminiscence. So kind of like the Arizona Cardinals last year where they're playing everyone super close. The spread, they always – do the spread, have the spread, mm-hmm. Bengals. Um, they play everyone close, and they are not the... – they're, they're not something to be taken. It's yeah. not like the Jets. They're not the Jets. They're not the Cowboys. Yep. They, this is a team that's going to play you hard. Yeah. So don't – don't, you know, this is not a joke, and I think that the Titans learned that, and, I mean – I think the Bengals were just, had a whole new offensive line out there, and they couldn't get to Joey Burrow once, which is great for Burrow, um, and oh. bad, very bad for the Titans because the Bengals' offensive line sucks. This is my point: is it the strength of the Bengals' offensive line or the lack of the Tennessee defense? Oh, it's the lack of Tennessee defense for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. It's definitely like the uh, lack of pressure on the quarterback is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, uh, agree, agree. It's especially with that. But I'm saying especially with that offensive line. Like, what are you gonna do when you're playing Indiana? Indiana's got a great offensive line, which they haven't been able to say for years with Andrew Luck. But they got a great offensive line right now, and you're playing them twice a year. Yeah, you. you and they didn't make any moves, too. Did not make – you know, got Desmond King, great, but – Clowney was a waste of time, again. Uh, we, uh, we said that, though. We, <laughs> we knew that. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, Titans got to improve. His pressures. Him. I keep hearing about these pressures. Yeah. You pressure the quarterback. I don't care. Get a sack. Mm-hmm. No sacks this year. Right. And I don't think he's getting double teamed. It's not like an Aaron Rodgers, oh, an Aaron, uh, an Aaron Donald situation where We're not double teaming this guy. Donald is getting double teamed every time, so his sacks look lower. But you know, this isn't him. Houston. He's not feared. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with this you on first, that. Sorry, this isn't first year of Houston. Right. No, you're right. You're 100 percent right about that. No, um, but, but good for the Bengals. Good for Zach Taylor. He's Absolutely. doing. A, he's doing a good job with that team, and a lot of players don't want to be on that team right now. Yeah. And another team that disappointed me, you got a guy who's literally said, I've asked for, a requ- I requested a trade, and you didn't do anything with it. Come on, guys. Mm-hmm. Let's get better. Yeah. Yep, I agree. All right, next, we're moving on to the Cleveland Browns versus Los, Ange- Las Vegas Raiders. Very similar teams. This was an uh, offensive juggernaut. <laughs> the wind was crazy there. The wind was. I'd say it, would, it better be Cat 5 Hurricane. <laughs> for this game? For the I, I, pathetic. 16-6. Come on. Uh, by the way, it's kind of like Amira playing each other. Both of these teams, I think, are permanent residents for the season in Hotel Purgatory, 
which me and oh, you spoke yeah. about. No, I agree. Five and, three. Five and three for the Browns, four and three for the Raiders. Both similar quarterbacks with large hype. Yep. Quite haven't met that. Um, you know, similar receiving core. I mean, uh, rushing, the the, it's, you know, it's very similar teams that, you know. Look at, look but, at their numbers from, from this week's game. Carr was 15 of 24 for 112 yards. Okay. Yep. Mayfield was 12 of 25 for 122. They're the same player. Literally same player. No, you're right. You're 100% CPR, right. Nine-point differential. And let's be real. Cleveland's defense has been terrible all year. There's no excuse. But I guess the wind, um, you know, Josh Jacobs, is. I think he's a stud. I think he's going to be a stud in years to come. Mm-hmm. He's a stud now. I like him a lot. Uh, Raiders could potentially surprise a lot of people. And I, I think that – but – Right now, these teams are in hotel purgatory, and that's not. I would rather be losing than in hotel purgatory. It's a, it's a tough, yep. tough place to be. But both these teams, uh, for sure, are there. The middle of the draft. Yep, yep. Right up. Brent and Browns really can't be in the middle of the draft right now. They've made all these big oh, moves. They've done all this stuff, and 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 they're just they're stuck. Yeah. Uh, the Browns, but without a but Las Vegas, this is good for them, I think, to improve a little bit. Uh, four and three. Cleveland Browns are five and three. Potentially two teams that could make the playoff but are right on the cusp of it. Uh, it's really going to be uh, anyone's race for those last couple of playoff spots, and uh, yeah. it's going to be fun to watch. Without a doubt. Us. And, here, <laughs> and next up we have uh, an AFC battle that – ugh. One team for sure will be making the playoffs. The other team will for sure be getting the first pick. It's Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs versus the Jets. Um, shout out to our boy, Sergio Castillo, on a 55-yarder, three for four on the day. Uh, he got blocked. He did get a block. Uh, someone blocked his last one, his last uh, yep. field goal, but three for four, 55 yards. Easy. Great job, Jets offensive line again. <laughs> God. Well, listen, he looked great. Um, and Sam Darnold looked good in the first half, like he does every time. Yeah. Um, other other ner- other news coming from just headlines uh, headquarters today is that they would like to proceed with Sam Darnold and Adam Gase. I don't know if that's just for you know. There is no way on this planet that both of those gentlemen, one of them maybe. Yeah. Both of those gentlemen will not be a part of the 2021 Jets. I agree with you. Maybe one. Yeah. Not both. No. There is no chance on this planet. And if I had to say they would keep one, I would say they would keep Donald. I don't believe Adam Gase will be coaching the Jets next year. No, I don't think he will either. Yeah. That, I, that, I, I hope not. Yeah. I hope not. Uh, Patrick yeah. Mahomes, four, 416 yards. Uh, running backs did not have a good day for them. Jets, Jets off uh, defense of uh, the, the front, their running defense looked good. Um, so that's good. Lord, but four, but 400, yards. 416 yards by Patrick Mahomes. The Jets are just it's, – it's, it's just bad at this point. Um, but you kind of expected this. I mean, Kansas City has run through a lot of teams. It's not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is a loss that so you've got to be like, all right, well, it's Kansas City's just really good. But the Jets are just terrible. Um, yeah. They've been hit with the injury bug, too. Our defense has is, is our, the least of our problems. Sam mm-hmm. Darnold got sacked five times. No interceptions, but no touchdowns. Um, yeah. He's got to get better. Um yeah, I mean, listen. This is what year five in the league. Year three. He's 2017. Why do I feel like, do I feel like he's old as all hell? No, it's he, this is his third year because it's uh, Jackson's third year, Mayfield's third year, and Allen's okay. third year. So it's his third year. Jesus. But again, still third year. I don't know many yeah. guys that get a ch- that get another chance. I mean, people <laughs> will people will say Mitch Trubisky, but let's not forget Mitch Trubisky brought them to the soup to the. Uh, playoffs and also made the pro bowl that year so yeah yeah I mean, I agree. he earned 
a chance. Uh, a chance, right, right. And people shit on him, but I mean, like, yeah. uh, well, I don't think. Uh, and rightfully so, but I mean, I, to say that he, I think he's for sure had a better career than Sam Darnold. Also, they were 2-0 um, to start. They were 2-0 well, to numbers. start this. They were 2-0 to start the season, and yeah. they, they benched him. Like, he's kind of gotten – I mean, a lot of people give him a hard time, but he's kind of gotten the raw end of the deal, too. He's never had a running game. He mm-hmm. has a terrible offensive line. He just gets crapped on because his defense was so good, but he doesn't have anything. I, yeah. I think – I'm not a Mitch Trubisky fan, but, I mean, to say that yeah. Mitch Trubisky deser- doesn't deserve a chance but Sam Darnold does is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I do, I do agree with you there. And you know, people people crap on Chicago for taking him over Patrick Mahomes. Nobody knew what Patrick Mahomes was gonna be. Like nobody knew that. And he gotta sit out a year and he gotta learn. Mitch Trubisky did not have that, you know, luxury of being able to mm-hmm. sit out a year and learn. And you know, Patrick Mahomes learned under a Pro Bowl quarterback. You know, yes. Alex Smith was a Pro Bowl quarterback. He was a solid quarterback. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he he got injured. Colin Kaepernick took his place. He got to Kansas City, brought them to playoffs. You know, he was going to bring Washington to playoffs. Uh, he, You know, Patrick Mahomes learned under a great guy, and they were able to build up that team. So I think Mitch Trubinsky does get a, a little bit of a, a of a bad rep. And, you know, Deshaun Watson hasn't had a great year this year. Um, and people, you know, constantly say, what about if he was with the Bears? And I think that if he was with the Bears, he'd have – a little bit of trouble too because no offensive line and the only good receiver you have is really Allen Robinson. So, but that's just my rant about Chicago. We haven't even gotten to the Chicago game yet. Uh, but we'll move on to Indiana and Detroit. Indiana completely killed Detroit. Yes. And I thought I thought Detroit was going to beat the Colts. Um, forty-one twenty-one. If you give up forty-one points, you don't deserve to win. You don't. No, you do not. And discuss this. I really do think that, that that seat under Matt Patricia's ass is starting to get real hot. Real hot. Real hot. Uh, a, a guy who came in as a defensive coach does not have a good defense for multiple years in a row. Right. This is starting to get ugly. I don't think Matt Patricia is going to be there much longer. No, but I do think that he will get another defensive coordinator job. Oh, absolutely. No, uh, I agree. I agree. I Just like I, I always thought that Jason Garrett would get another job as an offensive, offensive defense coordinator. Um, and he's actually not doing pretty bad with the job. I don't. Th- I don't think he's doing bad. Um, but you know, it's it's tough that you're right. That defense is definitely. Mm-hmm. Something that you know, skeptical. Is of. Skeptical is best. You know, Philip Rivers um, shouldn't be putting up these kind of numbers on you. Two sixty-two, three touchdowns. You know, they have a couple of really uh, decent running backs. They have the three. Colts are looking decent. Uh, I was going to put them in hotel purgatory, but I don't think so. I think they have a chance of winning uh, that division, especially with a, a very poor pass rush of the Tennessee Titans, uh, because they have a great they. They have a great offensive line. Uh, Philip Rivers, he's playing pretty good this year. He's playing at what you you'd expect, you know, better than you'd expect. Uh, I love I love yeah. Jonathan Taylor. I think he's going to be a yes. stud. Uh, Rodrigo are. Blankenship deserves to be in the rookie <laughs> deserves to be in the rookie of the year discussion. He's had the most points. He missed a, uh, a, an extra point this week, but love mm-hmm. love me some Rodrigo Blankenship. Give him, give the guy some credit. Where it's due. My my girlfriend said something funny when we were talking about Sergio. She's like, we were just talking about the trade deadline. She's like, oh, is Sergio going to get traded? I'm like, no, people don't really trade kickers. Right, right. And she goes, why? They score the most points. And it literally, like, like that's, you know, someone who's not a football fan. And mm-hmm. it kind of made sense. And uh, me and you talk about how kickers are undervalued all the time. Mm-hmm. But, Absolutely. yeah, no, Colts are looking good. Good yeah. coach. Great offensive line. Love everything about them. Um, need they're another team that could have used a wide receiver and they did not go for one. I thought they really needed one, but I guess they don't want to give up a first round pick when it's probably going to be a rebuilding year next year. Uh, yeah, I agree. All right, next up, we got another potential upset of the 
week alert with Minnesota beating Green Bay. We talked about this. Dalvin Cook, 163 yards. My, oh, my. That is nuts. You say upside of the week. I say there was never a damn doubt in my mind. <laughs> there was a doubt. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I would say that this is the second upside of the week. Yeah. Because of the Bengals. Young control of the Bengals team. Vikings are under the leadership of not an old Dalvin Cook, but an experienced Dalvin Cook. Looking good. Looking Second real good. In the league now. Kirk Cousins is 114 years old. Father time. Of course. Terrible. They're they're in the market for a quarterback. Yes. Um they have another to. ridiculous contract though. Garbage contract. Never understood why I was signed in the first place. I was glad when they signed him because that means the Jets weren't going to sign him. So that was <laughs> good news for me. But, yeah, I mean, listen, Dalvin Cook's that whole team right now. Yep. Get, get our guys some help. Green Bay, we talked about them being such disappointments. No defensive help. No uh, receiving help. Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers are going to have the worst backs yep. after this season's over for carrying this team so much. Um, mm-hmm. Get him out. <laughs> and Aaron Jones being injured doesn't doesn't help. Um, I'm still holding out hope that they win the uh, the Super Bowl, though, so that we have to see that on your, your ass. But, uh, yeah, uh, no. I do have to say this, not to be disrespectful to Aaron Rodgers in any way. This is actually a professional opinion of mine. Um, due to the lack of moves made at the deadline, due to the lack of attendance at the NFL draft this season, yeah, uh, I don't see it getting any better. No, for the Packers, I um, don't either. I think the book might be out on them. Run the ball all freaking day long and keep yeah. the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands, and you got yourself an issue. You have yourself, you know, going from what are they? Five and two. Sorry, five and two. Mm-hmm. You have yourself going from five and two to maybe twelve and four at best, yeah. eleven and five. Yep. Uh, when it was looking so much more promising, but I think when you get into the upper elite teams, the teams that know how to beat you, the coaches that know how to beat you, Pete Carroll, exactly, uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Over. Yeah, they're gonna run all over you. Yep. Yep. I agree with you on that. Um, this this was a nerve. This it, this uh, showed more about Green Bay than it did about Minnesota. Uh, Green Bay's in trouble a little bit. They're in trouble. They got San Francisco next week, who has has about eighteen running backs injured. They're on like their nineteenth string running back. I have. I think they'll win that game, but we'll talk about that tomorrow when we go over mm-hmm. our bets for the yeah. week. Yep. Uh, but yeah, for sure. Uh, Green Bay's a little bit in trouble. Moving on to to another game, the Denver Broncos. Oh, here we go. Beating the Chargers. I let's see if I should have taken that bet. No, I should not have taken that bet. Thank God I didn't. Drew Locks threw for 248 yards. Uh, Justin Herbert for 278 yards. Yes. <laughs> um, as I said, I'm not going to put any blame of this game. Onto my oh, man. No. This defense is atrocious in LA. Two good interceptions man. isn't good though, but yes, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I will give a little bit of respect to Drew Locke on this one. Um, About time. <laughs> but no. Uh, let's see if you can continue before we get moving on this. But, but definitely, you know, definitely a promising game for Drew Locke. I love when a quarterback can come back in the fourth quarter, lead his team to a victory. So I do have to give a little bit of credit there. I think this rivalry is going to come back once Kansas City kind of um, eventually collapses, which is going to happen. I mean, we're seeing it with the Patriots now. It only took 20 years. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think Kansas City is definitely going to be a lot sooner, just with money-wise. But this is going to be a fun fun little rivalry, Drew Locke, Justin Herbert, um, going forward. And I'm excited to watch it. I think both teams showed a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Both teams, I don't think – they prove anything by winning this game. No. Because I think both of them kind of need a, a better draft pick. Hell of a um, game. Hell of a oh. game. Hell of a game. Very impressive. I love seeing some some young quarterbacks doing great things, and, and we just saw that. So, mm-hmm. great, great. It's amazing. All right. Side note, did you know that hell of a 
was a word. I did not know that. So I always thought that when you say hell of a, I uh, Wait, hold on. We, we lost you for a second. What were you saying? What? We lost you for a second. Ah. So I always thought that when you say hell of a, that it was hell space of, of space a. a. Turns out hell of a is a word. Hell, U-V-A. Ah, well, that's something that I just learned as well. <laughs> I was today years old. I was today years old when I found that out. <laughs> yeah, I found that out one day because of spell check. Moving on to the New Orleans Saints versus the Chicago Bears. Kind of a boring game. I know that it went to overtime, but kind of boring to watch a little bit. Um, it's it's rough to watch Drew Brees. He's not what he used to be. It definitely is. Um, oh God, but it is fun to watch Alvin Kamara. It is fun to watch Alvin Kamara for sure, for sure. Oh. I freaking beast. Yeah, that's fun to watch. Nick Foles has been tough to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's not playing terrible. Like I, I want this. People are like, he's played terrible. He played terrible last week, but this week I didn't think he played terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got no, they got no the offensive line. They rushing Montgomery is is not great. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this is a game that I think both teams hurt their stock more than helped their stock. I agree, and I think the Bears are a mess. They are a mess. I think the whole team is a mess. The, this whole whim situation gets spent. Uh, oh, yeah. well, okay, so. I want to talk about the Wim situation a little bit. Um, I don't like what he did. I what he did was wrong. But I think that uh, what is it, Gardner Gardner Johnson? Mm-hmm. He is not innocent. He no, no, he hell started no. the fight. Uh, yes. But Wim looked Wim looked much more foolish by mm-hmm. going and then. The, I think it wasn't even the action of him. Like, first off, you waited till I think it was like not even right after that play. It was another play. No, it wasn't right. And you go and you sucker punch him. Yeah. And then you kind of start celebrating like you're Rocky. <laughs> and it's like, dude, like someone, a uh, Pat Pat McAfee said this on his show yesterday, and it's like, <laughs> Wims can't afford to be doing that, you know, on. Andre Johnson got into a fight with, you remember Cortland Finnegan and Finnegan did the same thing. And it was like, Andre Johnson could afford to do that. You cannot. Right. Right. Exactly. And I think that's the same thing with Wims, but I think it's on both of them. Um, I think. I I mean, I guess that was a way to get his name known. Yeah. But (laughs) wrong way, bud. It's not, uh, it's not going to get you anything. Not going to get you. And honestly, that's a receiving core that, you know, doesn't have a lot, and you could have imp- you could have impressed, uh, especially in that game. Um, and you just made yourself look like a fool, and you're spending two games. And I don't think that's going to help you as a. I believe he's a seventh round. He was a seventh round pick, so yeah, that's not very good. All right, moving on to Seattle versus San Francisco. San Francisco is a mess. They are holy lord. They can't keep a guy on the field. They can't. They can't. But you know what? Uh, with that being said, losing by 10 points to Seattle is not that bad, considering they started – they had to put in Nick Mullins. Oh, their receiving core is a mess. Their running back situation is a mess. Their defense is a mess. You know, like, I got to give credit to uh, – Josh Allen. Yeah, because, you know, 4-4 four and four is not a bad record for a team that's a mess. Um. But also in the same sense, Seahawks defense can improve. I agree. Yep, definitely played above. Mm-hmm. C- Seahawks mm-hmm. defense got to improve. Uh, got to improve. Got it. I agree. Uh, yeah. But uh, Seahawks are looking good. Seahawks are looking Russell like. Good. What'd you say about Russell Wilson? You said Russell Wilson will keep you in the game, but you got to help him a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And listen, he's playing out of his mind right now. Not a lot of yards that game, but um, four touchdowns. DK Metcalf, out of control. And, and once they start guarding DK, guess who's open? Tyler Lockett. It's like, <laughs> it's like you can't – it's 
it's like uh, old school Peyton Manning, Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison. It's, it's, it's awesome to watch, and I'm not saying those guys aren't quite on that level yet, but it's something fun yeah. like that, you know, which is awesome yeah. to watch yeah. as a fan. Olsen, yeah, the weapons are all over the place. Carson yeah. can yeah, uh, yeah. Carson can catch. They got Hyde. Hyde. That guy Dallas looked pretty good. It's yeah. exciting. It's an exciting team to watch, and I'm happy. If you know Russell, you know, if all those guys are guarded, he can just take off downfield for 30 yards. So. Right, right. Definitely clear yeah. favorites. I would say they're the clear favorites right down the NFC, even though the NFC is for sure wide open. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. I, I got to agree with you on that. Seattle looked good, though. Seattle looked good. Uh, defense got to improve. You can't win without a good defense. Mm-hmm. We, saw, we saw that with the Chiefs last year. They improved their defense, and they won. If they would have improved their defense the year before, they could have beat the Patriots. You can't win without a good defense. Um, so they got to improve. Yep. And I think well, that moves us on to probably the worst game I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> the Cowboys and the Eagles. Ben DiNucci. Ben DiNucci also – uh, had more yards than Carson Wentz. Just Ben DiNucci had 180 yards. Carson Wentz had 123 yards. Ben DiNucci, I don't believe he had a interception. Mm-hmm. Carson Wentz had two, and two really ugly ones, and a fumble, I believe, two fumbles. Yeah. I think uh, it's about time that the Eagles start looking to play Jalen Jalen Hurts. I agree. Um, I would also like to go out on a major limb and say this. The Giants were two plays away this season from winning the division. Oh, yes. They yes. were one play away last night. Right. They were one play away against the Eagles. Yep. And that's the key. All right, we'll talk about the Giants in a minute. Next. <laughs> oh, man, the Eagles and the Cowboys are just force-feeding this division to somebody else. It's, it's the, it was the ugliest game I've ever watched in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, 14 points. You beat the Cowboys on a third-string quarterback by 14 points of the former Super Bowl champions. You're the fun- – Well, they've – listen, I, I will say this. Carson Wentz isn't what, obviously, me and you both agree. He's not what everyone thought he was. He's been playing terrible. Nope. He's almost playing like He's a rookie. Like, dude, like a rookie makes those mistakes, thinks that he could get by. You've been in the league for four or five years now. Dude, you, yeah. you know when someone's sacking you. I mean, people used to – yell at Eli for just going down when people were, you know, by them. But he did that, and it prevented stuff like what happened with Carson Wentz. I think it's about time you look at Jalen Hurts. I don't think – I don't think, no pun intended, it could hurt you to look at him because I think that you guys are running away with the division to begin with. Yep. Uh, I, but I do think that the Giants could, could – and still could very well win that division. It's not out of the question. No. Uh, Eagles are, they're bad. And Dallas, that's bad. It's bad. And I don't think, I think it's, it's literally the injury bug for Dallas and paying people too much. I don't think it's Mike McCarthy's fault. He was trying to call some plays. Um, uh, Kellen Moore was trying to call some plays. Uh, their defense didn't look terrible either. Yeah. But God, the Eagles are terrible. <laughs> yeah. I am Cowboys. It's it's ugly. It's ugly. It's bad. It's so yeah, bad. It is bad. But going from bad to better, uh, the game last night was a close game. I think Giants kind of got screwed by the refs a little bit. I agree. But uh, I'm glad because I didn't have them, so I was happy to, to. But in the same sense, Giants, I said that I was going to bring up another team that reminded me of what Arizona was last year with those close games. Uh, the Giants versus the spread this season is a very good. Um, they are – Six games now where they've lost by less than ten points? Yeah. They are, the, they are not bad. Uh, people are like Daniel Jones should be in the hot seat. No. Disagree. No. Disagree. He, he's, he kept that play alive for so long. Mm-hmm. He kept that play alive. And that it, conversion on fourth and sixteen. Yep. The previous one, the conversion of fourth and five. Right, and versus a very good Bucks defense, might I say, a very good Bucks defense. Yes. Um, the Giants secondary got blown up this season. They're playing no deep. running back. No, no running back. You're right, but the running backs look great. Deion Lewis mm-hmm. looked great. Deion Lewis is always a solid player, though. Like not not a stud, but he's still a solid mm-hmm. player. Evan Ingram 
his hands looked better. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's sometimes that he like missed the thing. You know, uh, this team's exciting to look forward to to get another another good offensive lineman in there. You know, grab one of those picks. I think yep. the Giants are, are good. You know, depending on where Dak goes next season, because I think Dak is kind of where you know you could yeah use the right. argument. Um, He's, I mean, and by the way, showing the value of Dak not being there. Oh yeah, their offense is atrocious without him. Oh yeah, I agree. Um, the biggest takeaway I had from last night's Giants game, uh, I don't remember. I believe it was third and maybe two, or third and maybe third and five actually. Um, Daniel Jones was about to get sacked. And he threw the ball away. And for the first time in front of my very eyes, Daniel Jones became an NFL quarterback last night. Yeah. Um, he stepped up. He didn't make stupid plays last night. Yeah. He stayed with him, and he kept that team in the game until the very last play. He did. He did. And you know what? People are saying he's in the hot seat. I don't think so. I think that he's playing. Take him off. I think he's playing very well for a guy who doesn't have, you know, I think that, you know, he, he's playing very well. I, 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 yes, yes, he needs to work on the, uh, in the, the turnovers. The turnovers are awful, but that's a young quarterback. Once he gets better protection, this is going to be a, an exciting team to watch. The Giants really impressed me. They did. Well, one thing I like about Danny Jones, he's not scared. Not scared to throw the ball. Um, another thing, Darius Slayton is becoming a very good wide receiver in front of everybody's eyes. Oh, yes. Yes. I, I agree love with him. that. I like him, too. I like love him, too. Him. He's got balls. He does. Him. He does. Get, <laughs> grab some new, some more secondary pieces on the defense. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, offensive linemen is obviously. But, hey, Andrew Thomas looked good last night. He did. And he hasn't looked good. Yes. He yes. looked like a bust. And it's like there's these three other guys who were taken after him. Who you're mm-hmm. like, okay, they're playing much better than him. By the way, how bad does Green Bay look for not re-signing Blake Martinez? Oh, bad. Oh, oh bad. Oh. He's, oh, he's a stud. He's a tackling machine, man. <laughs> he's in on every play. They look so foolish. I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. But, yes, um, definitely very foolish. Big that's lacking. That's where they're lacking. Okay, so just finished up with our recaps. Now we're going to do our top 10 power rankings. I'm interested to hear yours, James. Okay. You start. So you start with your number 10, and I'll start with my number 10. Starting out at number 10, I have the Indianapolis Colts. I like- this was a toss-up for me. It was between them and the Buffalo Bills. I uh, – I ended up going with the Colts because of the punishment that they ensured this week. Yeah. Uh, and the Bills just haven't done anything for me to really be like, oh, my God, the Bills are good. Um, so until the Bills do that, and I don't like the Colts that much. I think they're a good team. I think they're on the border. But what the Colts did this week and power rankings change week by week, what yeah. the Colts did this week put them in the number 10 spot. What the Buffalo Bills did this week, dropped them out of my top ten. I agree with you on that. Um, just exactly what you said. I do think that the Indianapolis Colts played very well. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you. Yeah, the the Colts are definitely a good number ten uh, team. Mm-hmm. I have number ten as the Colts as well. Okay. Um, I totally agree with you on that. I think that they're making that move to being, you know, uh, a good team. Um, I think that Phillip Rivers is playing well. Their defense is incredible. Um, And Rodrigo Blankenship, you know, respect the specs. He earned it. It shouldn't even be the Indianapolis Colts of top 10 power rankings. We'd just be Blankenship number 10. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You got it. You got it. All right, moving on to number nine. This is where I have the Tennessee Titans. 
and they're lucky I'm allowing them in there. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep them in at number nine because of Derrick Henry. Okay. Okay. And because of Ryan Tannehill. Got I got you. Listen. Ryan Tannehill. I'm going to keep them in there because of the offensive prowess, but what's keeping them from the top five is their defense. Yes. And they did nothing to improve it. They're going to sit at number nine this week. That may change next week. So, right now, number nine, lack of defense is going to kill them. If they don't right. figure it out, if they don't get Clowney to freaking make a sack this season, they're going to be out of that top ten real quick. I – I agree with you on that. I, I think that you're right on that. Um, I like that. I also have the Titans as my number nine. Uh, same reason as you. Literally the same exact reason. Um, they're, <laughs> they, they need to improve their defense. They haven't improved it. I think that they're, um, they might be a shoo-in for the division, but the Colts are, are going to give them a tough time. So I agree with you on that. All right, next you got your number eight. Who do you have for number eight? All right, I might get yelled at here. Oh, no. It's never uh, just defensively alone, number eight is the Green Bay Packers for me. Okay. They scare me. Um, that run defense is just so atrocious that now they're a top five team for me right now. I got you. I got you. But the way that they were exposed on that run defense, and they had been all season – but the way they were exposed with Dalvin Cook just going freaking off uh, really, really opened up some eyes. And I think the Packers are going to suffer because of that run defense. Um, that's why they got bumped to number eight here. Yeah. I, I see what you mean with the Packers and their run defense. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I have the Ravens at number eight. That's a good call. Because I think call. they are missing a piece. I think we're having a little bit of an issue uh, mm -hmm. with their offense. Um, but their defense looks good, but also with the cornerback out for at least two to three weeks, I think that that's gonna it's gonna have an issue. Um, they they could make their way up, but for now, I, I think they're struggling a little bit. I agree. All right, who do you have for your number seven? My well, number seven is gonna be shockingly because I talked mad smack about them multiple weeks ago. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. They are doing things to impress me. That game against the Seahawks alone. Really did a lot to impress me. Kyler Murray, ton of weapons. Yep. DeAndre Hopkins is a beast. Larry Fitzgerald because he'll go out there with the best. Christian of them. Kirk's great. Christian Kirk is ridiculous. Um, they're playing well. They're well coached. I think they got a shot at this thing. It's a very tough division, but I think that they they're going to play well. They have to be in the top ten. Yeah. Some other teams slipped back, and the Cardinals have stepped up when I didn't expect them to. So they're my number seven for that reason alone. Okay, I like that. I have uh, the Saints at number seven. Uh, okay. I think that they're not as good as they've been in the previous years, but mm -hmm. I do think they're going to make the playoffs. Um, Alvin Kamara is a big reason why they're number seven. Their offensive line is pretty good. Yes. Um, hopefully mm -hmm. Michael Thomas comes back sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And uh, their defense isn't terrible. It's no. not great, but it's not terrible. Um, and, and they have a great coach. Cameron Jordan on it. Yeah, exactly. Makes you look good. <laughs> and and uh, Lattimore, too, is, you know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, Drink and by the way, ex-giant ex Jenkins has looked very good for them as well. I was not too happy about that, but it happens. You have exactly. to make some – you have to make moves. Exactly. Um, and, yeah, no, the Saints uh, – they're number seven for me. Because I just, you know, Trump Payton's a great coach. Great coach. All right, who do you got as number six? Number six for me is the Ravens. Okay. Uh, taking an L to the Steelers. Now, listen, a bunch of teams have taken an L to the Steelers this year. Yeah, so. obviously. But, like you said, uh, they're just lacking something. I think the moves they made could help them Yes. Um, coming up, but they have to sit where they are right now. And to me, they're at that number six. They're right on the edge of cracking that top five. Just yeah. not there yet. Did they have the opportunity to do so this week and in the weeks coming up. But for right now, we're keeping them at number six. Yep. That's, that's a good call. I have uh, the Packers at number six 
Mm -hmm. would have been in the top five, similar to you, if the run game hasn't gotten exposed. But because I feel like they're in a weaker division this year, um, Mm -hmm. I'm putting them up. And again, Aaron Rodgers is someone that you can never count out. Aaron Jones is someone you can never count out. Devontae Adams is someone you can never count out. But you called it. They had the opportunity to re-sign Blake Martinez, and they didn't. And yeah. it's really showing bad, poorly on, on, on the tackling side, which they're having so much trouble with. I think uh, Cook had a ridiculous yards after, you know, yards after contact uh, this game. So I agree. Packers could have been in the top five, but they are going, going down because of their run defense. And who do you got as number five? All right. This is where we deferred a little bit, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, at number five, I have the Saints. Okay. Um, Drew Brees is questionable for me. But they have an Alvin Kamara. Yes. Who – and dude, what I – utilizing his tools properly – the way he runs Taysom Hill out there as a quarterback, as a running back, as a wide receiver, it, it really adds depth to that. It adds depth. It adds excitement to that team. Then you got Kamara. Michael Thomas is coming back this week. I believe it's this week. Um, he is coming back, though. So that keeps them up there. And they did win this week. So I still do have them. And I have them above the Ravens because of that itself. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I see, I see what you mean there. Um, for me, number five is the Bucks, the Buccaneers. Oh. I think um, the Giants. It, it more impressed me the Giants yesterday than it upset me with the Bucks. Um, mm-hmm. I thought their cornerbacks could have been better. Um, they're good. They're good. Um, but again, something. I don't think they're – they are top five, but I don't think they're going to make the run that everyone thinks they are. I still think that there's something hanging on their back. Um, I do think they will win at the AFC South uh, – the NFC South. Um, I think they got a great team. I think Tom Brady's playing better than he's ever played. Um, he's got some great weapons. So they're number five for me right now. Okay. All right. Uh, at number four, I have – Oh, it froze. They struggled last night. Sorry, but time out. Oh, sorry. You, you froze. You froze. Oh, frozen. Solid. Solid, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, start over. Okay. Uh, number four, I got the Bucs. Uh, not diminishing last night. I know it was a close game. Giants played well. Defense mm-hmm. played well. Just so did the Giants. Um the reason I have the Buccaneers at number four is because they do have a lot of offensive weapons. Their defense is playing good. And we have a certain man named Antonio Brown joining the roster. Yes. Good so point. I'm going to keep him at number four, and I do think they're going to slip backwards at some point. Okay. I see. I see what you're saying. Um, I think that you're going to tell me I'm crazy for my number four pick. I think you're going to say they're way too high uh, or low, whatever way you look at it. I got the Cardinals as number four. Okay, I think you're a little. Yeah, well, you know, I, I understand why, but their two losses came early in the season to the Panthers and uh, the Lions, which were bad losses. But beating the Seahawks is definitely something to be proud yeah. of. And let's not forget Kyler Murray is a young quarterback. As these quarterbacks continue to go on, I think that he can potentially have an MVP-like season. Having DeAndre yeah. Hopkins is something that's great. Um, their offensive line is improving. Their defense is improving. I think it's going to be an exciting team to watch. That's why I have them as number four. Um, that NFC West is good. Uh, so I think uh, it's going to be a fun team to watch. That's why I have them yeah. as number four. All right. Who do you have? Okay. As number, who do you have as number three? All right. This is what I'm going to get yelled at. It's the Chiefs. <laughs> I know you. This is where I'm going to get told. Jimmy, you don't know football. Blah, 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 blah. No. <laughs> No, listen, I understand uh, why. I'll, I'll give you my reasonings. I think the Chiefs, and this is where I'm probably going to get yelled at, I think the Chiefs are having somewhat of an identity crisis. Okay. I understand that in each game you have to approach it with a different style of winning. But why on earth 
is Edward Zilaire splitting carries with Le'Veon Bell. And I get it. I get it. But Edward Zilaire was having a tremendous season. Why are you taking him out of rhythm? I don't like that. Why is Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball 42 times against the Jets? Yeah, that, that's, that is a little wild. I'll, I'll give you that. That's, that's wild. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I, I think – I just also want to say I think the top three could be put in any order. Yes. I think that's how good this top three is. Um, mm-hmm. So my number three, and I'm going to get yelled at, uh, <laughs> is the Steelers. And it's not necessarily because I think that – like I said, these top three could have gone any order. It, it's Absolutely. very close. They're all three um, great teams. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but I don't think the Steelers – their defense is incredible. And I always talk about how you need a good defense to win. Their okay. offense isn't quite there. Okay. And that's why – because lately, though defense helps win championships, it's that's typically the team that's more offensively sound that mm-hmm. has been winning the championships. Okay. Uh, so that's why I have the Steelers at number three. Like I said, any of these teams could have gone in any order. They look incredible. Um, Am I crazy for saying I don't see the Chiefs in the AFC championship? What would you say? Am I crazy for saying I don't see the Chiefs in the AFC championship? I think, I think you are crazy for that. Okay. But you know what? Crazier things have happened. Crazier things have happened. We <laughs> are watching the complete and utter disintegration of the uh, Patriots, which I never thought we'd see. So that's, that could happen. Um, who do you have as your number two? I have a feeling we have the same number two. The Seahawks? One second. I feel like I'm lagging. Let me know if I am or not. No, no, you're good. You're good. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, number two, I have the Seahawks. Um, I'm loving the Seahawks this year. They're just so fun to watch. They are like, so fun really, to watch. I wish, like, if they can improve a little bit defensively, get these guys playing a little bit harder. Now, don't take it. Don't take it against Pete Carroll to get this defense going. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I'm not concerned with their defense just yet. It is a little bit of a concern for me. They have been making improvements, slightly. Right. And listen, you don't need a top ten defense right with. You don't need a top ten defense no, with this offense, not. but you do need a better defense. No. Um, but yes, yes not yes. I. Same for me. Number two, everything you said. Um. They are very good, exciting to watch. I think they're running away with the NFC, but it's going to be an exciting race. Mm-hmm. Um, and for number one, you have the Steelers. Why did you put them as number one? I have the Steelers at number one, and it's mostly because of this. The Steelers look like they're having a lot of fun. They and do. they look really hungry, and the Chiefs haven't given me anything. Okay. Like, they've been playing great. Don't get me wrong. The Chiefs are playing great football. They're beating the crap out of everybody. But the Steelers are just giving me that little bit more that makes me look at them like uh, the Chiefs are not Super Bowl contenders. But the, the Steelers are just giving me that little bit extra. They're having fun. Juju Smith and Claypool are on on TikTok having the ball. The ball. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. These guys are just giving me that aura of we're going to the Super Bowl and nobody's getting in our way. See, I, I feel the same thing about the Chiefs. I feel like they are having fun. I feel like the Steelers are having fun. And I think what we're seeing is a shift from uh, – I'm going to bring up the Patriots again – from the Patriots' way of thinking of it's business, 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 business. So let's have some fun. Let's, let's post on social media. Let's bring these young people in. And I'm sure a lot of young people are now going to root for the Steelers and the Chiefs um, mm-hmm. because of this fun that they have. It's, a, it's like a fun thing. Yes. Um, I know that the Steelers are more so than the Chiefs. I have the Chiefs. Um, I just can't see anyone knocking them off. Uh, I know that they lost to the Raiders, but they had a very bad first half, and then they came back in the second half. And we've seen that Patrick Mahomes can do that. I think Patrick Mahomes is looking great. Travis Kelsey is looking great. Their offensive line is looking good. Defense needs a little bit of an improvement. Uh, They have tons of wide receivers that, you know, Edward Tillaire, I, again, think he should be carrying most of it. But when you have that, you know, Le'Veon Bell and I – Pretty sure Le'Veon Bell had talked to him and said, like, I'll take the other, you know, thing. Don't worry about yeah, it. Right now, it's not really other. It's Right now, it's, like, split down the middle. I, I, I understand. I understand. Um, but I, it's, I don't think I, they're using Edward Gillard enough. No, I, and I think, he's very, I think he's been very good. But mm-hmm. 
yeah, so that is our Power Women Kings, and that is our NFL recap show. We are back tomorrow with our bets, tuition, and pile on will be on tomorrow. Um, so stay tuned for that. Happy Election Tuesday. James, any final words? Oh, we got a little bit of a lag. James is frozen in time. You're frozen in time. Uh, uh, <laughs> James, any final words? Uh, yeah, go vote and uh, make sure you come back first tomorrow. Yes. All right. And that is our, that is it for tonight. All right.